It's the weekend, it's time to take something else to bits, and this time it's a chunkier device, and it's from Banggood. Once again, I bought this myself. Banggood have sponsored uh, products in the past, and most notably the, well, the only thing they've sponsored uh, it was the streetlight that I took to bits, the LED streetlight. But I actually, to be honest, uh, though they keep offering goods, I prefer to just buy the stuff myself, because then I can be honest about the, you know, what I think of it. So this one uh, is... Um, I was ordering one of those uh, star-shaped LED lamps and I saw this professional 10-watt colourful LED water flowing sort of ripple effect and I love ripple projectors and ripple projectors lend themselves well to LEDs. So before I open this, before you even do anything, let's uh, do a wee doodle of what's normally involved in a ripple projector. A good ripple projector has a light source. Let's just draw it as a sort of... Yeah, because the original ones actually were tongues and light sources. So, a light source, and it passes through an aperture, a hole, and usually there's a motor mounted on either side, and each motor has a disc. The This one's would be here, and this one's would be just stood a wee bit prouder so it was in front. And the motors both rotate in the same direction so that the, effectively those two discs of glass overlap with the light source behind and because uh, this one's going up the way and that's also going that direction then because they're overlapping there one's going one direction one's going the other and it creates this really complex rippling effect and all that's required after that the light source the hole shining through this and, and this glass uh, that they normally use it's a sort of privacy glass, you know the sort of thing you'd, windows that you don't want people to see through, so they're sort of rippled, they've got sort of a general sort of ripply pattern in them. And you get various grades of that ripple and each has a different effect. But in the traditional light, uh, it would then, at the front of it, it would have just a big lens uh, on the front to basically focus on this position here where the uh, rippled glass was uh, overlapping and it projects a really amazing ripple effect. I'd love to show you it but uh, unfortunately I loaned my my uh, current, the one I've, only one I've got here, LED ripple projector to my brother and he's not returned it yet because he likes it so much. But that's the gist of it. A cheaper unit, oh uh, another version of it uh, put in the traditional tungsten ones and some of the white LED ones also on one of the wheels had segments of dichroic glass and that's annoying. It meant it changed colours it went round. But you could switch that on and off to actually that wheel on and off just to stop it, just in a colour you wanted. But as soon as you did that, all you had was one rotating disc against a fixed ripple. And it's not quite as good, but it still gives a good effect. So um, that's what would be nice uh, to find in this unit. So... Um, the Banggood offered it in a choice of blue, green, pink, red, white and yellow and, and as far as I can see it's just a single LED mounted inside. So uh, let's, uh, let's try it out, that's a good idea. And then we'll open it, which is what we do. So here's the unit and I hear it sort of... Alright. Raw plugs are screwing it to your wall and a generic sort of CCTV tripod type system. So this is a, a tripod hole in the bottom and oddly it seems to have tripod holes on the side. Yeah. Oh. Yep, that's that works. Okay, but we're not putting a tripod right now. We're opening it. So let's give it the power test first. It says it's 10 watts. Death adapter. Power. Three watts. Okay. And no movement. What's this? Oh right, okay, now we get movement. There's a speed control knob at the back. Which uh, is dead for most of its uh, movement. And then the end suddenly bursts into life. Okay, that's... Uh, hold on, I'm just going to point this at the wall. Oh, you know what? That's pretty good. Right, okay. I'm just going to let you see what this looks like. Okay, you know what? That, for 3 watts, is extremely good. It's very clear. 
that uh, it's just a fixed, uh, it's got a pattern lens in the front. It's got the sort of, um, the lens you'd normally find in the front of those sort of lamps that project the sort of dots all over the floor. But I can, from what I can see so far, it's only got one disc of a patterned plastic. I hear that, or a, a disc with holes in it, but I think it's going to be patterned plastic. And the effect is very good, and I particularly like the effect when it's put down a surface, because it creates this streaming energy effect like plasma that just fires out along the surface you put it on. That is a really nice effect. Okay, let's open it up right now. So this is the typical construction you'd normally expect of these things, and I'm guessing so far, um, the construction, as you say, is uh, like it's the, sort of the two halves of the case sandwiched together and the screws in the front and back will hold it. I'm going to take the other side off because this side obviously has part of the mechanism. So let's just start unscrewing this. Now I'm guessing that the fact it's actually not 10 watt, although it's very good for 3 watt, suggests it might just have one of those standard little 3 watt drivers in it you normally find in the LED GU10 lamps. They're so common these days. And if that's the case, then a 3 watt LED is probably just going to be a single chip with about 3 volts across it. So I guess the motor might just be across that. But having said that, it's got a speed control and the speed control might be electronic, it might be current regulated, or it might just be a potential motor and sears the motor because some of these motors draw very, very low current. But we'll find out once it's open, which it's almost open right now. Okay, there's the disc on a typical motor and it's very reminiscent of the lamps with the uh, that project the pattern of dots. That looks just like one of those common 3 watt LED supplies. The question is, is it going to be one of the ones with the discrete transistors or the chip? Um, the LED is a standard star LED mounted onto the aluminium plate and it's got one of those lenses, those black housings with the lens in the front to actually collimate the beam and fire it forwards. And then there's this which is just, I was going to say a hot melt glued, but it's that chewy silicony stuff. Um, and it's just one of those lenses that you'd normally find on the front of one of those lamps that they've just used as a pattern lens in the front. It's basically been cobbled out of parts from other fixtures. I don't see electronic control for the motor. The motor is coming up to this potentiometer. There are two leads coming out from the power supply, which I guess are probably just going to be paralleled with the LED leads. And there's a little connector. Ah, right, okay. They've got the connector. Because the motor has just obviously had a standard plug connector on it, they've soldered the socket with just one pin onto the side of the potentiometer, and the other pin uh, they've just taken straight to the power supply, and it's floating in thin air. And the other power supply side goes through the potentiometer. It's going onto the middle pin, which then varies that. So um, let's uh, investigate. Let, let's find out what value that potentiometer is first. That'd be quite useful to know. Although I do have to say, if you turn it down to low settings, it doesn't start. Um, I guess it's going to be a fairly low value. Actually, let's go for the 2000 ohm-ish value. And I'm going to measure across the two outer pins of the potentiometer, which will show the, the actual resistance of the whole potentiometer, which is 362. So it's a... Th yeah, that's a... What's the nearest standard value to that? Do they do? 360... Ohm potentiometers? 330 ohm potentiometer plus tolerance, I'm guessing. Okay. So let's uh, take a look in the power supply and see if it's the type with the chip. Because I can always put a new bit of heat shrink around and I want to see if it's that. I think the wires are just tapped off. Um, so let's. Uh, Peel the heat shrink off this. I notice this is a, it's a not an earthed case, it's not a grounded case, it's just two pins, so your only separation, given the LED is mounted on this metal plate, your only separation electrically is this heat shrink round here um, and the isolation in this tiny transformer. And I've never actually taken one of these tiny transformers to bits to check the isolation, but having said that, they're made by so many different manufacturers uh, to, to so many different standards that it might be quite hard to accurately tell. So 
Let's uh, discharge the capacitor with my finger. Oh, right, okay, it's dead. So the power supply is a standard 3-watt power supply. It's got the uh, little bridge rectifier. I'm just going to change my glasses from my super high zoom ones here. Makes it so much easier reading chip numbers. And by that I just mean reading glasses. So it's typical 400 volt 4.7 microfarad. It's got a bridge rectifier with the anti-tracking slot. This is just a generic 3 watt LED driver. Um, there's the rectifying diode and the output. There's going to be a little capacitor somewhere uh, probably tucked underneath for basic smoothing if it's really much as needed. And the chip might be a bright power one. It might be a bright power. Or it might not be a bright power. It looks like it's a bright power, 9021A. It's a generic BP9021A. So it's really an absolutely common little sort of 3 watt power supply. And the motor connections are just tapped off in parallel with the um, with the motor connection, uh, with the LED connection. So let's uh, go in a little bit further then. Let's take this uh, whole assembly out the bottom. I wonder how <clears throat> tightly the beam is collimated from the LED because I'm, I wonder if maybe it would have been better with a larger lens if it would actually have put more light out. So let's uh, pop this little disc off, this little patterned crinkle disc. The disc is plastic, it's almost like that sort of random diffuser material you find in modesty panels or in some diffusers. No, it's just that sort of strange, just random pattern which gives it that good rippling effect. The LED is actually screwed from behind. So, technically speaking then, let's see how easy it would be to change an LED. The motor has a couple of nuts in it to actually act as spacers. Probably just to get the focal distance right. And the LED, I think, is being held in place by the lens actually being screwed in with two screws. Onto a little steel plate. Looks like galvanised steel. I think it's galvanised steel. Magnet. Steel. Uh, the LED is kind of... Oh, that's it, heatsink compound. So there's the LED, quite easy to change. And there's the lens. So um, the world is your oyster for colours. You can choose any colour of 3 watt single chip LED you want. I'm guessing that's just going to be about 3 volts. It's putting across that or so. Uh, quite a large chip inside. So yes, it is a 3 watt chip. And um, that's really quite a nice little light. I do quite like that. Um, it's unfortunate that because it's using the simple resistive control, if you want to turn it down to a really slow setting, then you have to sometimes just, well, there's a limit. Uh, you might have to actually go up to it and turn it up and then down again to actually get it to kick start. But, um, uh, at modestly low settings, it will, at power on, it will just kick into motion itself. But um, at the higher speed settings, it will just start automatically. But yeah, that's quite a nice, simple design. And the visual effect for a 3 watt LED it's surprising. It's actually very good um, for home use, just for projecting onto a wall. Um, it's a very nice effect. What would be nice here is a cyan LED. That would be quite nice, the sort of turquoisey colour LEDs. But yeah, you know what? I really like that light. I think it's a very good one. It's nice. Okay, I had a hunt about and I found another LED ripple projector. It's an American DJ H2O LED. And it draws 21 watts, and it's in the left, and the cheap banger unit is in the right, the one that draws 3 watts. And pointing these at a wall, you can probably see it already, the banger one just blows the American DJ out the water. That's really surprising. The intensity is completely different. The American DJ one does have the advantage of the counter-rotating glass discs, and it has the rotating colour, dichroic colour as well. I think it's on an independent motor. But, um... The, even on open white, the intensity of the American DJ unit is not anywhere near. The, this uh, cheap unit completely swamps it. Um, so that's, that's quite impressive.
So for the sake of completeness, let's open the American DJ unit and take a look inside, because it is done more in the style of traditional ripple projectors. So let's hike some screws out of this and see what we can find. Uh, do I need to take that out? I don't, don't know if I need to take that one out. Let's uh, take the end cheeks off. So the American DJ unit has a big heat sink in the back here, and it gets quite hot because it does use uh, a 10 watt LED. Not sure what type of LED. I remember when I bought this, I was kind of disappointed how bright it was. I was expecting it to be a lot brighter than it turned out to be. But it does uh, have the facility for the dichroic colour changing effect. Which you can, basically it's got an extra switch that turns that motor on and off. And you just stop it when you get to the colour you want. This looks promising. I think this screw may then result in a slide out panel. Is that panel going to slide out? Yes it is. Revealing the more traditional format. Uh, it's looking like a, a sort of Kree-ish type LED down here. There's the motor that drives the dichroic colour disc, so it is an independent motor, and it's got the two much larger glass discs uh, here. Uh, you could, seeing that, uh, uh, I'm just going to change the brightness just a little bit. There's, that's better. So we get the two patterned actual glass discs, plus a lens here, and then an adjustable focusable lens here. There's a transformer, which uh, uh, is that just purely driving the LED via? There's a switch from power supply here. I'm guessing that the switching power supply looks like it's being driven for the transformer. Um, but I would normally expect the motors just to be standard 240 volt synchronous motors, which it does look like they are. Yes, 220, 240, yep. So, um, the same sort of construction, but with the two discs this time, uh, and the addition of the colour wheel, so you can actually uh, switch it on and rotate it to the colour you want. It's quite nice that, that it's, it's just not got the colour wheel tied onto one of the discs like some of the other units used to have. But um, that said, uh, this is quite an expensive unit, and for single colour application, I have to say, and simplicity and quietness, because this one buzzes quite loudly, I have to say that uh, the little cheapy disco type unit uh, is actually really quite impressive next to this. It's kind of disappointed by that in the sense that, you know, something so cheap and simple, because it's ultimately it's just got the simplest possible beam path. It's not uh, cutting down the light too much. Uh, I'm guessing that the American DG unit just has an inefficient beam path in here. But, um, yeah, so, um, yes, uh, I'm afraid that the cheap, generic eBay and Banggood type light wins.